Hello and welcome to the training session. My name is Ashraf Fayad, and I'll be working with you today on the uh, Modbox 2010 to Maya and doing some photo retouching in the final comp. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Dave Cardwell for providing me with his model. Uh, he did the work here and I'm just doing the workflow. So if you haven't had a chance to look at the new features that's available in Modbox 2010, the first one that you're going to be looking at here is the some of the new filters that's added. So uh, if you have an NVIDIA card, you'll be able to view the NVIDIA AO view filter, which is this one here. It's very nice and accurate. And uh, of course, this is a tone mapper that we have from before, so just disable them. There is one here that is the screen composite that you can output 16-bit um, floating image, uh, floating bits formats in, uh, to give you a Z-depth. And you have the normal map and the non-photorealistic filter as well. So I'm just going back to my originals in here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to extract the maps, which is the displacement, normal, and ambient occlusion. And just if you want to see uh, my settings, I didn't do anything beyond the normal here. I'm taking 1024 by 1024. Quality is good. I didn't even go for best. And I'm just taking that to my dedicated folder and I'm taking it as TGA file. And again, I d I'm using the default options. As for displacement, uh, you'll see here there's a new option we're going to be working with that the ability to choose which level that you want from so I'm going from the lowest level to my highest and again I'm using the best guess to extract the rays for the search distance 1024 by 1024 and I'm taking it as OpenEXR last thing now is the normal map and I'm taking it as uh, Maya compatible and I'm outputting format STJ. So I'm just going to hit extract and pause for a second because you don't want to be waiting for me until I finish. So now the uh, extraction is done. So let's have a quick look at my maps. This is the displacement, 32-bit EXR, normal map, and my ambient occlusion map. Last thing I'm going to do right before I exit is to uh, go to the lowest level and export my model as OBJ so I can take it to Maya and start subdividing it or sorry or start adding all the uh, channels and render it in Maya. So pretty much select the object and export it as OBJ. And one other thing just going to point out to you if you have uh, once you receive 2010 you have the ability now to export it as FBX. But just for the simplicity of this workflow I'm exporting it as OBJ file. To bring our file on Maya, there's a couple of things I want to make sure of. If you go to the setting, setting and preference under the preference section, rendering, you want to make sure that the uh, use Maya style out of detection is checked on. And when you do the import, make sure you are in OBJ, not best guess, and you are in single object. And then we can bring our object here. So the first thing I'm going to do to make sure that everything is still accurate is go to my UV texture editor and make sure the UVs are still intact and they're not broken. Now let's adjust our camera settings. So if I'm going to go here for the image size, I'm going to make that. Actually, let's make this 600. Let's see how that one looks. Actually select the camera here for a second. And for the uh, display over scan, let's adjust this. And uh, since I'm using a 35 focal length for my camera, I'm going to adjust the camera aperture here, drop this a little bit. Actually, let's make it uh, vertical. So I'm just going to flip these values. There you go, that's better. And I'm going to change the mint array. And for the quality, I'm going to go to uh, production. And I don't need all these ray trace. So I'm just going to drop these to 2 and 2 and 4 and flip this to Mitchell. So let's rotate that guy a little bit on this angle. I'm just trying to find a better angle for myself here. Alright, let's call this the way that we want it here and let's save it. To assign my shaders, I'm going to use um, my handy mill that I wrote before, where I locate displacement file and the normal map, ambient occlusion, and the color. 
create and close and now we have all the shaders assigned so I'm just gonna do my first render just to test how it, everything looks like and once I hit render the first thing we're gonna have we're gonna see is that uh, we did not assign a, a mentor approximation so we am expecting displacement to break off from the geometry and here it is All right. so I'm just gonna stop this and actually um, do rendering test the resolution and take this to half and we're gonna do window approximation we hit the create subdivision approximation and render one more time so here's the first look out of the creature but then I noticed there's some areas here where the uh, color is not assigned properly and that's because the um, the bug that's available that's uh, in the Mentoray CC mesh. So for this, I'm just going to assign add adder and MI export CC mesh at Boolean Mentoray subdivision approximation one. So if I look in here, you will see under the extra attribute for the Mentoray now, I have an, another option that's called export CC mesh, and that's default now off. You can enable it again, but that will give us that error. So I'm just going to keep this image for comparison. I want you all to, to notice the render time because the CC mesh is very very fast when it renders. But however, we have that problem with the uh, edges of the UVs and uh, that creates a seam in color and displacement. So by disabling the CC mesh, yeah, we will fall back on the old displacement, uh, on the old tessellation method, but you can overcome that problem and you will still render. However, it, the render time will be much slower. Alright, so render is done. You will see there is a big difference between these two. These colors now are much better and actually more accurate, but however, the render time almost doubled. Okay, so that's the benefit of having CC mesh. It, exp it uh, renders very fast, but then until this bug is gets fixed, this is what we have to do. Alright, so let's save our file and start adding lights.